Good afternoon. The mass will begin for. This baccalaureate mass, as it were, is the book end of our academic year. Last September 22, 2021, at our mass of the Holy Spirit, we welcomed the community to our new academic year, invoking the Holy Spirit's guidance. Today, we ask for God's blessing upon the graduates as the community sends them forth as missionaries with a commission in the words of St. Ignatius to go and set the world on fire. Our main presider and homilist is our local ordinary, Most Reverend Onesto F. Ontiopo, Bishop of Cubao. Joining him are Father Primitivo Birai Jr., S.J., Provincial Superior of the Philippine Jesuits and Vice Chancellor of LSD, Father Enrico Eusebio S.J., LSD President, Father Rogel Anasito Abais S.J., LSD Vice President for Academic Affairs, and other priest faculty members, formators, and friends. Let us now rise and join the choir in singing the entrance hymn.
name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you and with your spirit. As we prepare to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us which and reigns with you in the unity Words, therefore, you are known. I proclaim to you the God who made the world and all that is in it, the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in centuries made by human hands, nor in his self by human hands because he needs anything. Rather, it is he who gives to everyone life and breath and everything he meant from one the whole human race to dwell on the entire surface of the earth and he fixed the ordered seasons and the boundaries of their regions so that people might seek god even perhaps work for him and find him though indeed he is not far from any one of us for in him we live and move and up our being. As even some of your poets have said, for we too are his offsprings. Since therefore we are the offsprings of God, we hope not to think that the divinity is like an image fashioned from gold, silver, or stone by human heart and imagination. God has overlooked the time of ignorance, but now he demands that all people everywhere repent because he has established a day on which he will judge the world with justice through a man he has appointed. And he has provided confirmation for all by raising him from the dead. When they heard about
reports of area of Pakistan. The Lord.
Jesus said to his disciples. Please be seated. Over oh, here. for this time under more normal circumstances. Though we have been in this pandemic for more than two years with much struggle, pain, and stress, we can also see some positive effects. We are blessed in commemorating the 500th anniversary of the evangelization of the Philippines and the year of St. Joseph. Because of the lockdown, families have learned to pray and eat together to appreciate each other. We are made aware of the needs of others and we are challenged especially during this health emergency. to which Pope Francis has constantly called us to commit ourselves. In his apostolic exhortation, Evangelii Gaudium, Where our communities truly become places of encounter, mission-oriented, inclusive, and open. The church has... Oh. The Pope not only calls us, but in fact, leads the way. Thank you. 
of evangelization, but that any reform must be placed in the context of the missionary nature of the church. Evangelization is the church's response to the missionary mandate of our Lord. Hence, evangelization is the church's going forth to proclaim. But the missionary transformation of the church invites us to rediscover two important components which may have taken for granted because we have only focused our attention to our being sent and our being empowered to proclaim. These two components are communion. They were yet. Without being chosen and gathered by the Lord, the one sent loses credibility. When one does not Listens. After all, the committed disciples continue to listen to the Holy Spirit and learn from Him. Jesus, with having been gathered first. By the Lord. It is important that we remain in communion with the Lord, not only to know what we are to say, but to allow the experience of being cold and being loved by the The love of God, our communion itself is. In people's daily lives, it is willing to abase itself, human life, touching the suffering flesh. in humility and touching even the most ugly and dirty among us. To evangelize is not only to preach, it is to be involved in the lives of the people. Evangelization, after all, is not only for an exclusive group of people. The mandate to preach the good news 
to all means we cannot exclude anyone. Evangelization, therefore, always happens in communion of walking together, of making sure that no one is left behind. This, my dear brothers and sisters, is the synodal path that is before us. A synodal church is a community that listens mutually where everyone has something to learn. The lay people, the bishops, the Pope, all listening to each other and all listening to the Holy Spirit. Whenever we hear the word evangelization, what usually comes to mind A journey that happens through listening. This is the reason why Synodal Synodality through our discernment circles in preparation for the last national election. We do not listen only to our limited and exclusive circles. Rather, we try our best to listen to those who oftentimes do not seem to be heard in the church. The poor and the marginalized. While we continue to value the advice of our pastoral councils, for instance, in the parishes, who are usually composed of more knowledgeable members of the parish, we need also to listen to those who hesitate to take active part in the parochial life on account of poverty or of lowliness of stature. The need to listen to those who do not belong to our usual institutional circles often makes us uncomfortable. We have been a custom of having the last word in many decisions in the church. The day leaders have become dependent on the priest for everything, and it has bred in us the ugly reality of clericalism. In the words of Pope Francis, there is that spirit of clericalism in the church that we feel feel superior. Sitala's preaching. Listening involves
when participating in we must come disarmed, vulnerable, and open to possibilities. Unless we do so, a dialogue becomes no different from a rigged electoral exercise. I think that for us, in order to truly, truly walk in the synodal way, must undergo the kenosis of Christ, a self emptying that leads to docility to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. Let our preferential option for the poor also mean preferential option to be poor. This means taking the carriage to be divested not only of material wealth, but also power and influence. It means coming down from our ivory towers so that we may tread upon the soil walked by, upon by the poor. It means divesting ourselves of any authority so that we may tie the towel of service on our waist, kneel down, and wash the dusty and muddled feet of the unshod. For no servant can be greater than his master. No student can be greater than his teacher. Dear brothers and sisters, especially you, my dear graduates, as you are sent to your respective mission or work, do courageously resolve to truly walk the synodal way of communion and mutual listening. Amen. may be guided and inspired by the Holy Spirit. For every petition, let us say, Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. For the universal... For Pope Francis, we pray for God's continued guidance. May suffering anywhere unite us in empathy and compassion. May we offer help and hope to those who live in despair, the poor, the hungry, those displaced by war, the abused, the persecuted, and the forgotten. Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. For our governments, 
May governments and people of every nation welcome immigrants, reject violence, resolve conflict peacefully, find answers to the climate crisis and discover the best ways to foster reconciliation and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace of healing, may our wounds of body, mind, and spirit enable us to become instruments of new life and hope to others. Let us pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. For our graduates, we pray that the Holy Spirit may guide our graduates in whatever mission they might be sent. May they find comfort from our LST community's continued embrace and support as they journey through a life of service. Let us pray to the Lord. Listen, Lord, hear our prayer. For the many needs we hold in our hearts. For those who are sick, dying, and grieving. For our beloved deceased LSD professors and students due to COVID-19. Father Ruben Tanseko, Father Let us pray to the Lord. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, may your Holy Spirit
knees rise. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. O oh God, who, by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. you yet more gloriously when Christ are passed over has been sacrificed for with the old order destroyed a universe passed down is renewed and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ therefore overcome with paschal joy every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, and all we have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people of yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy this gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
he took the chalice and giving you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. History of Faith. For a word as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance which you are elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Ignatius, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. I'm 
Give us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the scene of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Rise. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O oh Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. His Excellency, Most Reverend Ernesto Antioco, 
will now bless the diplomas and medallions. Come. God, our loving Father, giver of all success and glory, bless these diplomas, certificates, and medallions, fruits of the years of study and reflection, which they embody, graciously help these graduates to put into practice the ministerial formation they have attained for your greater honor and glory, and for the service of their fellow human beings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a short announcement. We will have a break to prepare for the second part of our celebration, the commencement exercises at 4.30 p.m. The area for vesting of togas for LSD faculties and guests will be in the hall near the Ateneo Grade School entrance lobby. The graduates can vest in the designated classrooms nearby. Thank you. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in the right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. As ascended, go in peace, glorifying God by your life. Thanks be to God.
ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin our commencement exercises. Let us all rise to welcome our graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the Vatican Anthem. Kindly remain standing until after the invocation which follows immediately. Yeah. 
maghihil, pero sa sinangalan, alam ng puso sa detiboy buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka ng magiging, sa manlulupit, di ka pasisigin. Sa dalat at punok, sa simoy at sa langit ng magaw, may bilagang tula at awit sa paglaya minamahal. Ang kisap ng mataw at po'y tagumpay na nagdiningin, ang bituin na taraw na kailan pa may magdiningin. Lupa ng araw na may ating pagsinta, po'y langit sa piling mo. Ang minigaya na pag may makakil, ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Scholastic Robert Rizzo of the Society of Jesus, Student Council President, will now lead us in the invocation. Dear Jesus, help us to spread your fragrance Flood our souls with your spirit and life. Penetrate and possess our whole being so utterly that our life may only be a radiance to you. Shine through us and be so in us that every soul we come in contact with may keep your presence in our soul. Let them look up and see no longer us, but only you. Stay with us. And then we shall begin to shine as you shine, so to shine as to be a light to others. The light, O oh Jesus, will be all from you, for none of it will be ours. It will be you shining on others through us. Let us thus praise you in the way you love best, by shining on those around us. Let us preach you without preaching, not by words, but by example, by the catching force the sympathetic influence of what we do, the evident fullness of the love our hearts bear for you. To our God and Father be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. We invite the Vice President for Academic Affairs of Loyola School of Theology, Father Rahel Anisito L. Abais of the Sight of Jesus, for some introductory remarks before the distribution of diplomas and certificates. Ladies and gentlemen, on this 25th day of May, in the year of our Lord 2022, in the presence of the religious superiors and guests, candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees, baccalaureate, in Sacred Theology, Licentiate in Sacred Theology, and Doctorate in Sacred Theology, and recipients of the various certificates are now going to be presented. I declare these commencement exercises officially convened. Welcome to the 23rd commencement exercises of Loyola School of Theology as an ecclesiastical faculty. The ecclesiastical degree baccalaureate in sacred theology will be conferred 
on 58 candidates, the licentiate in sacred theology on four candidates, and the doctorate in sacred theology on one candidate. STB Class Valedictorian of 2022, Reverend Aloysius Lobega of the Sight of Jesus, Summa Cum Laude, will now deliver his valedictory address. Most Reverend Honesto Ontioko, Bishop of the Diocese of Cubao, Father Primitivo de Rey, Provincial of the Philippine Province of the Society of Jesus, Father Enrico Eusebio, President of LST, Father William Abbott, our commencement speaker, Father Rogel Abais SJ, Vice President for Academic Affairs, LST administrators, professors, formators, benefactors, schoolmates, family, and friends. Today is a joyful day for the graduating class of 2022 and for all those who have accompanied us. The journey we started together has successfully ended. We came, we saw, we conquered. Congratulations, dear classmates. From this side of the room, you all look strange, but smart in your togas. Well done. Let me begin by thanking the classmates and faculty of this great school who have surprised me by choosing me as the valedictorian for this graduating class of 2022. I am so honored and humbled to stand here and address you on behalf of my classmates reflect on our shared journey of the past years and to cast some light on the future that awaits us. Being the first batch to graduate in person after the pandemic, this class would like to call itself the post-pandemic batch. Talk about education during the pandemic and recall how all of us, students and professors, struggled to adjust to online learning. Yet our professors did their best to shape us into effective laborers in the Lord's vineyard. During our comprehensive exams, we were cross-examined by the teachers and scholars of the law here at LST. If you want to know how difficult it is to be cross-examined by the teachers of the law, ask Jesus. Fortunately for us, after being cross-examined, we have been let off the hook, and now we are here to graduate. And of course, graduation has been both a personal and collective effort. Each of us has been challenged and transformed in different ways. Personally, it has been a time of unlearning and learning. My studies have gradually led me to a deeper appreciation of our faith. At the same time, as I grappled with various theological questions, I felt that my faith by, was being deconstructed, especially by the study of history and the examination of scriptures. Each progressive semester showed me how little I understood the triune God and how much more I needed to learn. To borrow the words of St. Paul, the thorn in my flesh that really kept me awake at night is this. How can I speak about God and in God's name if I know God so little? For a moment, I imagined myself as that legendary child with St. Augustine at the seashore, trying to empty the whole ocean into a sand hole. 
Unfortunately, my professors, who are also pastors, gradually helped me to understand that not all, not all theological questions have perfect answers. And when you come to think about it, this is true not only in theology, but also in the challenges we face in our daily lives. Dear classmates, no doubt you also faced various personal and academic challenges. Perhaps sometimes you also felt like clay in potter's hands. Nevertheless, we do not want to miss the forest for the trees. Our difficulties hopefully helped us to grow into the persons we are now. To surmount these difficulties, we have not only relied on our professors, but also on one another. We explained to one another what we did not understand from the professors. We advised each other on which professors to choose depending on their teaching styles. We navigated together the complex world of online learning and shared tips on how to keep awake during a Zoom class. We reminded each other about upcoming quizzes and shared tips on the best excuse to give the professor in case one missed the deadline. We all know that the internet suddenly disappears on the day of the deadline. In sum, we have accompanied each other towards this graduation. Dear classmates, graduation is the end of one journey and the beginning of another. What does our next journey look like? Looking at the world as it is, no doubt much work awaits us. The world is still healing from the COVID-19 pandemic and our contribution to this healing will be valuable. We are already in a post-truth society and a politically fractured world, made worse by the pandemic of misinformation and lies. We can feel the effects of the senseless wars going on in some regions of Africa, Asia, and Eastern Europe. We see an upsurge in refugees exacerbated by joblessness and climate change. We notice the decline of Christianity in the West the massacre of Christians and the burning of churches in countries such as Nigeria, Sri Lanka, and India. In this state of the world, dear classmates, shall we become paralyzed or shall we do something? Shall we become passive to the destructive winds of change or shall we set in motion positive winds of change? Dear classmates, if these past four years have taught us anything, they have taught us at least one old but valuable lesson. Together is stronger. If you wish to go far, we do it together. If we wish to go fast, we do it alone. Together we can help overcome difficulties and together we can help build a better world. We have already shown signs of this communion and solidarity. When COVID-19 struck in 2020, we locked our homes and communities to protect ourselves. But soon, realizing the need to be in solidarity with our suffering brethren, we calculated our risks and joined other volunteers in our neighborhoods. Whether it was making protective gear for the medical frontliners, repackaging food in the Ateneo covered courts, or delivering food packages to struggling families around our various Place, the situation might appear. Let us not forget to share our five loaves and two fish, because these, when taken together and blessed,
allow me to conclude my address by thanking all the hands that have nurtured us on our journey through Loyola School of Theology. We are grateful, first of all, to the president of LST, Father Eric, who, has ens who ensured that our learning continued online even amid the COVID-19 pandemic. In addition, although several of us are international students, Father Eric and his team have strived to provide a suitable environment for every student, no matter which part of the world they come from. A special thanks to our beloved Vice President for Academic Affairs, Father Rohel Abais SJ, who since the advent of online learning has gracefully endured a barrage of emails from each of us as we sought his guidance in various academic matters. Our gratitude goes to our beloved professors for they never compromised on the academic rigor we deserved even when we are not good students. Our professors are the giants on whose shoulders we stand. Many thanks to our superiors and formators who handed us over to LST to undergo a rigorous theological program. Last but not least, Maraming Salamat go to the benefactors of LST, whose support makes our formation possible and makes LST such an excellent school. Dear classmates, however much we had a rewarding time at LST, all good things come to an end. In the words of Shakespeare, all the world is a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and entrances. We came to the stage of LST and we have played our part. Very soon we will exit the neat artistic hallways and patios of LST and set sail into the murky waters of the world. However, we will be courageous, hopeful, and trusting in the one who missions us. Above all, we will remember that we can do all things through him who strengthens us. Dear friends, thanks for coming to celebrate this joyous day with us. Dear classmates, Sin Chukmu, Ang Galingmo, Kape Diem, congratulations once again. Thank you, Reverend Aloysius. Our commencement speaker, Father William M. Abbott, SJ, is the Province Secretary of the Society of Jesus in the Philippines. Father Bill was born in Elmhurst, New York in 1941 and entered the Jesuit novitiate in 1959 at Bellarmine College in New York. He was missioned to the Philippines in 1963 where he continued his Jesuit studies at Berkman's College at Sacred Heart Novitiate in Novaliches and at Loyola School of Theology, where he finished his STD degree. He earned his MA in Theology at the University of Innsbruck in Austria. Father Bill also has an MA in Philippine History from the Ateneo de Manila University and a licentiate in Sacred Scripture from the Pontifical Biblical Institute in Rome. Father Abbott served at LST as an administrator and professor for many years. He has taught courses in scripture and homiletics, and has also served as executive secretary and director of pre divinity studies. Father Bill has also been active in the work of formation and spiritual accompaniment. He has served as director of the pre-theology program at San Jose Seminary, and is a spiritual director for many seminarians and priests. Ladies and gentlemen, let us give a warm welcome to our commencement speaker, Father William Abbott, SJ. First, I've got to try to see if this thing will reach me. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of this because some of these things are very distracting. Uh, Aloysius gave the introduction, so I won't repeat them all. But I would like to thank Father Eric and LST for the invitation. Uh, 
It's the first time I've ever had a chance to be at a graduation to speak. Uh, and uh, it's kind of unexpected at this stage of the game when I've been away from LST and teaching for almost 25 years. It's uh, uh, coming back really into waters that I had swum in before, but really are different. And one of the difficulties of being this third speaker is after Bishop Ness and Aloysius is you're gonna have some overlap at times because the same issue has come up. First of all, I'd like to congratulate both the students and the faculty for the academic achievement we're marking today. Most especially for having done this while negotiating such unusual and challenging academic hurdles. It hasn't been an easy two years, certainly for any of us. And for you, with online and hybrid learning variations, really a trial. Certainly great kudos go to the professors and the school administration for adapting their presentations to online platforms. I'm happy I was here 25 years ago, so I was spared all of this. I feel like a dinosaur with an ancient way of teaching that they don't do anymore. And I also have real admiration and empathy for you students who have had to endure long hours looking at a screen, suffering isolation, deprived of, deprived of the peer companionship that normally goes on, being asked to adapt to a new way of getting theological formation. And your patience, your resilience, and your perseverance have to be acknowledged with much praise. Which leads me to some reflections as to what lies ahead. Because I guess commencement talks are supposed to include a look to the future and what qualities are needed to face it. The first consideration stems from the kind of experience you've been dealing with during this pandemic. It's upset many, many apple carts or mango carts, whichever you want to have, and called for radical rethinking of approaches and attitudes. That you've handled this with success, at least with respect to addressing the demands LST has posed to you in these trying times, but that you've handled this is a good omen for constructively dealing with the kind of situations that will likely be more and more part of what we used to call routine now. Climate change, political instability like we're getting in Ukraine, polarization of societies, the rampant proliferation of fake news and media influencing on people. You could go on and on. I wish you had a longer list than I do. But what seems clear is that you're going to need a good measure of the resilience, adaptability, and perseverance that you've shown already in COVID pandemic. Rather than merely complaining or lamenting or feeling sorry for yourself, what will be called for is a readiness to roll up your sleeves and face the unexpected, even the undesirable. It's the hard-headed realism and commitment of a leader like Volodymyr Zelensky in Ukraine, who was offered a helicopter to get out. And his reply was to his benefactors, I don't need a ride. I need weapons to stay with my troops to defend my country. I suspect that will be more and more the spirit you will need as you move ahead. And thankfully, it's some of what you've already shown, mustering the determination and the resolve to finish despite a pandemic. The programs of LST you've taken on and you've gotten through them. 
something to pass on. A second thought has to do with what might seem to be, maybe might be seen to be your own growth and development in the context of these serious issues you will be facing. Let's face it, you've been given opportunities that most people don't get. You mark today what has to be seen as really an increase in vision, becoming more aware of and better equipped for important things than you were before you started. Hopefully, that means more wisdom and not just accumulation knowledge of facts. Hopefully, it's even more than Sophia. It's the biblical chokmah, the wisdom and awareness that implies grace and gift from the way the Lord sees things. Seeing more widely and deeply is going to be much in demand in a world suffused with fake and polarizing disinformation. On Palm Sunday, the Inquirer ran an article dubbed Sins of the Times, Church Concern Grows Over Fake News. And various Filipino theologians and clergy were cited in their denunciation of the moral depravity involved in subverting the truth and deceiving people to believe lies. On the 5th of May, just after the World Press Freedom Day, the Star had an editorial entitled Information Chaos. It noted that the Philippines in a list of 180 countries had dropped from 138 to 147. And in Southeast Asia, which is no bastion of press freedom, we were ahead, ahead only of Vietnam and Myanmar. They quoted reporters without borders who lamented the disastrous effects of news and information chaos, the effects of a globalized and unregulated online information space that encourages fake news and propaganda. And their record showed a twofold increase in polarization amplified by information chaos that fuels divisions between and within countries. And the star went on to state that the depth of the problem is evident in the ongoing campaign that will be remembered for the pervasiveness of fake news, trolling, and lies to promote candidacies. And the inability of about half of the population, according to a study, to recognize what fake, fake news as it is. It's little wonder why Professor Randy David, in a very perceptive op-ed piece on the 1st of May in the Inquirer, said why Filipinos vote the way they do. He said, willful blindness to issues and to visions of a better society is what makes our politics so hopelessly myopic and personal. And he ends the article by concluding, the point is elections are less about public opinion than they are about hidden feelings and latent dispositions that cannot be easily formulated in a coherent way or countered by appeal to facts. In short, in short, this is the kind of a context in which you will be engaged. It's one that is in dire need of perspective, a wider vision, or analogously what Pope Francis called spiritual sensitivity. He had an audience the Wednesday before Holy Week and he spoke of the anesthesia of the spiritual senses as a widespread syndrome in a society cultivating the illusion of eternal youth. And it's mostly something we're unaware of. Numbed senses without understanding what is happening. And he says when they are numb, the inner senses, the senses of the spirit 
that enable us to understand the presence of God or the presence of evil, we cannot distinguish between them. And it's not simply a, a matter of thinking of God or religion. The insensitivity of the spiritual senses relates to compassion and pity, shame and remorse, fidelity and devotion, tenderness and honor, responsibility for oneself and for others. The numbed spiritual senses confuse you and you no longer feel these things spiritually. In a way, this problem is not something completely new, though technology now enables its proliferation much more ex extensively than before. In the latter days of Lent, John's gospel recounted a number of encounters between Jesus and the willed blindness of Jewish leaders. There's a striking part at the end of chapter seven in John where hearing Christ's words, some of the crowd say, this is truly the prophet, this is the Messiah. Others retort, the Messiah will not come from Galilee. And then they send guards to arrest Jesus. But they come back without him and they say, never before has anyone spoken like this one? Their concrete personal experience is lambasted. Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, this accursed group is the one you're listening to. And even when Nicodemus, one of their own leaders, protests that they are violating the law by not by condemning Jesus without hearing giving him a hearing, and he shot down, he shot down. You're not from Galilee too, are you? No prophet comes from Galilee. It's fixed, set way of looking and refuses to listen. It's the same kind of resistance you find in the way they try to suppress the blind man in chapter nine of John, or in the encounter between Peter and John with the Sanhedrin in Acts 4, and when they reply, what are we going to do with these men? Everybody living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it might not spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning never again to speak about this one. Willed blindness interpreting reality to back up preconceptions and self-interest. It got Jesus crucified. It got the blind man, the cured blind man, kicked out of the synagogue. It got Peter and the disciples beaten up and jailed. But then and now, it needed to be faced down. And that's something we're all going to have to be doing, you especially as we move on. In some ways, the blind man in John 9 might be a suitable image for where you are and what you will be called to do. Because all of us move from partial vision to fuller seeing. And that would surely be true of you as you complete the demanding work and personal perseverance called for by the LSD program. It should have led to greater clarity, perhaps more coherence in the way you look on things divine and human. It should also spur you, very importantly, spur you on to continued formation, ongoing development, to keep enhancing the trajectory that you've already begun. Like the blind man, you will be challenged to stand up for, and with very basic honesty, to what you understand, be witnesses to a wider perspective in the face of those who would promote narrowness and confusion. You may suffer for this commitment to the truth, but remember it's the blind man's vision and his fidelity to it 
that is rewarded by a profound encounter with Christ. At the end of that story, when Jesus heard that they had thrown the man out, he found him and he said, do you believe in the son of man? Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? You have seen him and the one speaking to you is he. I do believe in the word, now it's Lord, and he worshiped him. I do wish you all the fullness of God's blessings and every strength as you continue your journey to greater vision and truth. I certainly look forward to the ways you will contribute to pushing back what is negative and destructive. May you always be instruments of light in a context filled with many shadows. And may your service be marked by much gratitude for what you have received, along with a real joy in being privileged to share in the Lord's own mission of scattering darkness. And then we go back to John, this time chapter three. Whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his or her works may be clearly seen as done in God. Graduates of LST, go forth and let your faith, your, your lives and your works always be done in God. Thank you. Thank you, Father Abbott. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now present the candidates for graduation to the President of Loyola School of Theology. The candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees, please stand. Reverend Father, I have the honor to present to you the candidates for the ecclesiastical degrees, baccalaureate in sacred theology, licentiate in sacred theology, and doctorate in sacred theology. Since the candidates for graduation here presented have, have fulfilled all the requirements of their programs, I ask that you accept and admit them to the respective ecclesiastical degrees they have merited. By virtue of the authority vested by the Congregation for Catholic Education in Loyola School of Theology, I accept the candidates presented for the respective ecclesiastical degrees and do hereby admit them to the degrees with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. The candidates for graduation who have been admitted to the ecclesiastical degrees are requested to put on the medallion to which the degree entitles them. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now read the names of the graduates who will receive the diplomas from the President. Recipients of the first cycle ecclesiastical degree baccalaureate in sacred theology. Roel Joe Eclipse Abonal Magna Cum Laude. Aloysius Albert. Jerry San Morilia Andrino, cum laude.
Bak Hai Yang Kum Lao De. Paul John Marundan Bayat Banai Banai Magna Kum Lao De. Remigius Asuk Berek. Emmanuel Rafael Viene Viene. Um Laude. Agustan Mahanga Diamungo. Ronald Handiniro Calderon, cum laude. Ian Gabriel Sebrero Seplano. Ray Lord Trivino Chito Cum Laude. Jose Carlos Santiago Cruz. Narong Rit Dauriang Padung. Edril Cruz Dairin, Magna Cum Laude. Vincent Roy Tan Del Sol, Cum Laude. Dim Kaul Tang, Cum Laude. Dot Wan Ban. Marlon Torres Padros, cum laude. Oscar Teologo Garcia. Daniel Alexander Amascual Hilvano, Magna Cum Laude.
Huang Tan Fong, cum laude. Anthony John Dulfo Javier. Christian Joseph Corrales Hobson, Magna Cum Laude. Kam Sian Muan, Cum Laude. Nien Ba Kwa
Nian Pu Loi. Nian Tai Dui. Nian Van Nhat Manya Kum Tauder. Nian Van To. Thomas Machuki on the Eki. Jefferson Jeffrey O'Pown. Presilo Tanyamor Padua the Third, Cum Laude. Emerald John Seletaria Paladin, Magna Cum Laude. Pam Doi Juan. Pam Ngo Huang Pyung. Pam Tan Fong. Abraham Barranco Pinuela, Magna Cum Laude. John Chester Flores Plenius, Magna, magna Cum Laude. Mark Jeffrey De Gamo Rosolada. Lloyd Vargas Sabio, Magna Cum Laude. Jernel Badana Salino. Fidel Italio Talabon, Magna Cum Laude. Erasto Fernando Torres Carpio.
Karel Liano Indo. STB graduates from LST affiliates, St. John Vianney Theological Seminary in Cagayan de Oro City, Jomer Ariar de la Sierra, Magna Cum Laude, Bon Christian Joy Permilan Hazon, Jomar Paradero Tolomia Cum Laude. From St. Joseph Jesuit Scholasticate, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Din Chi Tien, Cum Laude. Le Van Luan, Magna Cum Laude. Nien Hao Fu, Nien Ho Lu Hue, Cum Laude. Nien Hu Huang, Nien Hu Huang Jung, Manya Cum Laude. Nien Huang Tuan, Magna Cum Laude. Gucci Tan Magna Cum Laude. Recipients of the second cycle ecclesiastical degree, licentiate in sacred theology, biblical theology, Father Huang Ba Kuok Pui, Marcus Eckhart Locker. Moral Theology, Sa E Shu. Spirituality and Pastoral Psychology, Nini Tun. Recipient of the third cycle ecclesiastical degree, doctorate in sacred theology, biblical theology, with a dissertation entitled, To Do Justice, To Love Mercy, and To Walk Humbly with Your God, an Augustinian reading of Micah 6 8. Father Rodel de la Cruz Magin, Magna Cum Laude. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now announce the candidates for graduation of the civil degrees. The candidates for graduation of the civil degrees took their courses at Loyola School of Theology under the Theology and Ministry Program of the School of Humanities of the Ateneo de Manila University. They will be conferred their degrees at the university graduation. The following professional civil degrees will be conferred on 21 candidates of Masters of Arts in Pastoral Ministry and the Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry with the following concentrations, Family Ministry and Counseling and Spirituality and Retreat Directing, Master in Pastoral Ministry, Master in Pastoral Leadership and Management and Master in Spirituality and Retreat Directing, on, and on three candidates of Doctor of Ministry with concentrations in religious education and spirituality and retreat directing. The following academic de civil degrees will also be conferred. Master of Arts in Theology, Theological Studies on seven candidates and the Doctor of Philosophy in Theology on two candidates. As I call the names, I request those called to stand to face the assembly and to take a bow. Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, Carl Philip Ong Laison. Journal Badana Salino. Fidel Italio Talabon. 
Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, Family Ministry and Counseling. Christine Cheng Yoke Lam. Mia Haleko Pelinio. Mark Jeffrey De Gamo Rosolada. Master of Arts in Pastoral Ministry, Spirituality and Retreat Directing, Abraham Barranco Pinuela. Master in Pastoral Ministry, Bernadine Jade Dion Valmores Balite. Paul John Marundan Banaybanay. Joseph Vincent Ubaldo Bores. Mamerto Duran Gaugano. Daniel Alexander Amascual Hilbano. Tam Sian Muan. Marvin Raganas Luage. Roberto Tomas Oliveros Jr. Jefferson Jeffrey Opao. Ariel Liano Into. Master in Pastoral Leadership and Management. Nyen Ki Tram An. Master in Spirituality and Retreat Directing. Wang Tan Pong. Beatrice Chan Ong Samson. Pam Ngo Huang Nyung. Master of Arts Major in Theological Studies, Moral Theology. Theophilo Jovan Santiago Pumpeda III. Master of Arts in Theological Studies, Pastoral Theology, Raylord Trevino Chito. Paul Richard Gomez D. Master of Arts in Theological Studies, Systematic Theology, Edril Cruz Dairi. Ed Aksang. John Lemuel Lagarde Lennon. Ramon Mikael Paulo Escarcha Nigdao. Mark Ian Natividad Pelinio. Octobinari Sapnan. Tran Juan Chin. Doctor of Ministry Religious Education. Jeremy Yad. Jayekten Leviste. Ramonchito Mercado Lucas. Doctor of Ministry, Spirituality and Retreat Direction. Father Jerin Chandy. Doctor of Philosophy in Theology, Religious educa Education. Justin Joseph Giang Badion. Edwin Bellio Odulio. We congratulate you for successfully completing your degree programs in the theology, in theology and ministry program of the School of Humanities through Loyola School of Theology. The Vice President for Academic Affairs will now call on the recipient of the diplomas. We will now award the following diploma to 56 students who have completed their respective programs. The Diploma in Basic Pastoral Ministry, Integral Ecology, Pastoral Care of Migrants, Jesuit Junior Studies, and Pre-Theology Studies. As I call their names, I request those called to come forward to receive their diplomas from the President. Basic Pastoral Ministry. Romuel Aloysius Zuniga Apuya. 
Simonet Montes Doque. Maria Therese Martinez. Integral Ecology, Annette Castellino de Leon. Ravine Rayan Bandoy Morillo. Yuko Nobuta. Joan Morera Peris. Abigail Cabalda Rico. Cynthia Joy Sabado Villapa. Pastoral Care of Migrants. Ruel Joe Eclipse Abonal. Aloysius Albert. Remigius Asuk Berek. Banto Jesuit Junior Aid Studies of twenty twenty one Rex Francis by Elon Ford. Gerard Joseph Gonzalez Enriquez. Gao Hankin. Genkeshan, Jackle John, <laughs> David Loyola Manubag. Renier Guzman Mariano, Jasper Ong Yan Kiat, Wang Te Chong, Sin Wei Feng. Jesuit Junior Aid Studies of 2022, Renzo Miguel Vargallo Aquiar. Jaime Martin Paraino Candelaria.
find the wrong. Ganja. Winston Chun Swan Heng. Francesco Jan Yusike Labunto. Shui Lei Liu. Rogelio Regalario Nato Jr. Tian Nai Tang. Pre-theology studies. Angelo Bautista Balsita. Bui Jaap. Al John Bien, Gubatan Cartio. Maria Rachel Ladesma Puraya. Pepe Joey Hara Dinoro. Rudy Seranilia Esmeralda. Adan Louis Garcia Flores. Elia Hill. Grong No. Marcelinos Engelbertus Caboso. Maria Olivia Cruz Lucas. Lumzong. Mai Huang Yan. Mai Xuan Chuk. Jackson Maling, Renier Guzman Mariano, Nien Kang Hui,
Nien Suan Tan, Audrey Totanes Pamada, Renjan Tim Tim Puertos. Rush Nimwell Agsinaw Tinhai. Tran Dui Hong. Tran Tuya Trin, Maria Mara Hani Serrano Ubalde, Shun Yip Wong. We will now recognize 17 students who have completed the program Professional Diploma in Family Ministries. They will be awarded their certificates in a separate culminating activity. As I call the names, I request those called to stand to face the assembly and to take a bow. Professional Diploma in Family Ministries. Hil Freire Kacha. Father Allen Solomon de Guzman. Bambi Maureen Enriquez Donato. Adrian Cruz Enaje. Abigail de Guzman Fulgueras. Mary Caroline Flores Gabriel. Maria Basilda Arevalo Hamad. Pinto Joseph, Jessa Marie Cervantes Hunsai, Rowena Deang Lim, Julie Ann Cobar Morales, Nien Tan Hui, Katrina Angela Perfecto Ortiz, Maria Lourdes Santos Perez, Elvira Maria Mota Rodriguez, Erika Asiado Romero, Ochani Biwang Sagun, This year, LSD honors faculty members who have been teaching in LSD for 10 years. May we call on the Vice President for Academic Affairs to present the honorees. Loyola School of Theology boasts of an impressive roster of full-time and part-time faculty composed of Jesuits, religious men and women, diocesan clergy, and lay women and men who are outstanding not only in their respective fields of theological and ministerial expertise, but also in their commitment to church and country. Their names including those of our distinguished professors and meriti are listed in your graduation senior program. Six, eight of our current teaching faculty have served LST for 40.5 years, 30 years, and 10 to 10.5 years as of this current semester. This afternoon, we officially and most sincerely express our deep gratitude to them for their dedication, loyalty, and commitment to LST. Father Herbert Schneider of the Society of Jesus, 40.5 years.
Father Jose Mario Francisco of the Society of Jesus, 30 years. Father Arnel Aquino of the Society of Jesus, 10 years. Father Albert Cecilio Flores, 10 years. Father Renato Repole of the Society of Jesus, 10 years. Dr. Carmen Lourdes Valdez, 10 years. Father Jose Kilong Kilong of the Society of Jesus, 10.5 years. Miss Rose Regalia, 10.5 years. Let me call on our president, Father Enrico Eusebio Jr. of the Society of Jesus to give the closing remarks. Before we conclude our celebration this afternoon, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2022, all of you in the degree and the, in the non-degree programs. You're the third batch in LST that will be remembered forever as the COVID-19 batch or the pandemic batch. Our graduation last 2020 was a fully online lockdown graduation with just us LST administrators present in a small choir of Jesuit scholastics. Last year's was held at the Church of the Jesu, and we were on a semi-lockdown with only the religious superiors as guests. And this year we have come back to our full face-to-face -face graduation, still with some restrictions, but with hearts unrestricted in giving thanks to God. Salamat sa Diyos. Among our degree and non-degree graduate honorees this evening uh, are 87 Filipino graduates and 78 international graduates coming from 23 countries around the world. Please be patient with me as I read this list because I would also like to honor the beloved land of birth of our LSD graduates, Austria, Cameroon, China, Congo Kinshasa, Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, India, Indonesia, Japan, Kenya, Malaysia, Mexico, Myanmar, Pakistan, Papua New Guinea, Philippines, Singapore, South Korea, Spain, Tanzania, Thailand, Timor-Leste, Uganda, and last, but certainly not the least, Vietnam. Pinakamarame. As an ecclesiastical faculty of theology under the auspices 
of the Society of Jesus, LST traces its roots to San Jose Seminary, founded in 1601 as the Colegio de San Jose. And also, by extension, we trace our roots to the mother of all Jesuit universities and pontifical faculties, the Pontifical Gregorian University in Rome, the first Jesuit university in the world, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola himself, in 1551, and initially called the Roman College. The Gregorian, where a number of LST faculty have obtained their, their licentiate and doctorate degrees, was envisioned by St. Ignatiorum, a university of all the nations for the defense and the propagation of the faith and for the training of wise and qualified leaders of the church and society. Today, LSD endeavors as well to be an ecclesiastical faculty of all the nations in the service, not just of the Philippine church, but also the universal church, as we send out our graduates to the world for their mission, in particular in the Asia Pacific region and the African continent. Though most of our graduates are seminarians and religious, preparing for the ordained ministry and also priests, we do have 12 laymen and 29 laywomen and religious sisters who just graduated today. It's just that they're not here present, no, many of them. Now, these data that I have just mentioned somehow bring us to understand the distinct quality of theological and ministerial formation in LST. Here in LST, we strive to prepare diocesan and religious seminarians for the ordained ministry with an international and a global perspective and mindset. They experience the church as both particular and as universal as they reflect on the gospel of Jesus locally in the context of their parish, city, or country, but always with an Asian and global perspective, also African perspective, and never too narrow nor parochial. Moreover, here in LST, as they pursue their professional development for their respective careers and ministries, lay women and men and religious sisters do play a crucial role in the formation of our future priests by their presence and active engagement in and out of the physical or virtual classroom, we are able to conduct the theological formation of seminarians and priests in LST in a more integrated environment of equality, collaboration, and mutual respect and exchange. Though definitely not perfect, theology is done in LST in a setting that provides opportunities for priests to be, to dialogue, to listen, to discern, to learn from voices and perspectives other than their own and their own narrow ecclesiastical circles and not in the setting of an echo chamber. In the process, our future priests are challenged to become more humble and listening, to be more synodal and less self-referential and less self-entitled servants of Christ's mission. Congratulations once again to the LST class of 2022. Thank you, Father President. Our new graduates in the STD, STL, STD, Diploma and Civil Degree programs are now alumni of LST. We now induct them into the LST Alumni Association. I ask all graduates to stand, turn to page 23 of your souvenir program, and raise your right hand and recite with me the oath of induction to the LST Alumni Association. Together, I say your name. Graduate theology in the year of the Lord 2022, realize that the advantages and opportunities of my formation 
are not for me alone. In great part, they are a trust to me from my family, my school, my congregation, diocese, my people, and my God. In response to this trust, I humbly give myself. I give my support and interest as a member of Loyola School of Theology Alumni Association to assist in improving its efforts in fulfilling its mission and in growing in its capacity to be responsive to the contemporary concerns for the service of the church in the Philippines and in other Asian countries. In cooperation with others, I will endeavor to repay this trust with generosity for the greater glory of God through the intercession of Mary, my mother. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to be the use, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to seek reward, to set up with knowing that I do your holy will. The Vice President of Academic Affairs will now formally close his 23rd commencement exercises of the Yola School of Theology. On behalf of the Loyola School of Theology community, we congratulate the graduates of the ecclesiastical degrees and the recipients of the, of the diplomas and their families, congregations, and dioceses. We congratulate as well all our students graduating with master's and doctoral degrees from the School of Humanities of Ateneo de Manila University. We thank our commencement speaker, Father William Abbott of the Society of Jesus for joining us and for inspiring us in the pursuit of our mission in this challenging world. We thank His Excellency, the Most Reverend Onesto Onkyoko, Bishop of Cubao, for presiding at our baccalaureate mass. Words are never enough to express our gratitude to all the faculty members as well as the staff of LST. We thank and congratulate Reverend Aloysius Lubega of the Society of Jesus for the valedictory address. We also thank Scholastic Robert Rizzo, Student Council President for the invocation. Finally, we thank you all for joining us today on this happy occasion. We go forth on our mission, trusting in God's providence and your prayers. I declare this commencement exercises officially closed. Thank you again for sharing this occasion with us. A pleasant evening to everyone. We now invite the entire LSD faculty and all degree and non-degree graduates to come forward for our group photo. I'd like to request the graduates to, for, to congregate at the front while the faculty be here on stage.
Thank you. 